flying car. <gasps> oh, look at this. This is, this is amazing, guys. Fancy a flying taxi to whisk you to your office or your next appointment? These prototypes carry the promise of a new era in mobility. My name is Cassandra Bo, and I'm ready for takeoff. I just time traveled into the future. Some experts say flying cars will reduce traffic jams in urban areas, lower pollution, and save travel time. Today, I get exclusive access to one of the developing companies and to find out more about their technology. In 2020, this single-seater prototype had its first piloted test flight, staying up for about four minutes at 10 meters above ground. Not long, but that could change soon. The makers of SkyDrive want their vehicle to be market ready by 2023 as an air taxi across Japan's main island, Honshu. When I think of flying cars, I think of Back to the Future, Disney's Meet the Robinsons, and my childhood cartoon, The Jetsons. These movies and TV shows kind of shape and influence what I think a flying car would look like and how it would be operated. I can't believe that our sci-fi imagination is now becoming reality. My team and I are on our way to SkyDrive. We've had to sign a non-disclosure agreement about the tech we are about to see and even the secret location of the research facility. SkyDrive is just one of about 80 companies around the world working feverishly on EVTOLs or electric vertical and takeoff landing aircraft. That includes global players in the automobile and aviation industries, mobility service giants such as Uber, and smaller startups like Japan's SkyDrive or Germany's Volocopter. Supporters say that they can help solve the traffic problems of today and future megacities at a lower environmental and financial cost than helicopters. Critics argue that the technology and necessary infrastructure are practically unaffordable, that flying cars in the end will be only for the elites. About four hours by train and car from Tokyo, I find myself in the mountainous countryside in Aichi Prefecture. No sign of high-tech robots and flying cars yet, but I'm secretly hoping I get to take off today. <laughs> Whew, coming up here was already quite an adventure, but right now I'm standing in front of the R&D center of SkyDrive and the location is top secret. The air mobility startup was founded in 2012 and is backed up by Toyota. And behind these doors is where the magic happens. So let's go in and take off. And here it is, SkyDrive's prototype. Unlike helicopters, it has eight small rotor blades distributed over four axes, which is supposed to be quieter with a smaller turning circle. SkyDrive CEO showed me around. I soon found out, no pilot's license, no test flight for me. Air travel is available but still inconvenient. Our goal is to create a compact and quiet aircraft that allows people to use the sky on a daily basis. If all goes according to plan, SkyDrive will use its flying cars as taxis in tourism and in medical rescue. But many technical hurdles remain. Our current prototype has eight motors. With eight motors, even if one fails, the other ones can still carry the aircraft. So, more motors provide more safety. However, if you increase the number of motors, you also have to build it much bigger. The goal is to figure out the right number of motors needed to ensure safety, but at the same time, keep the aircraft as compact as possible. In China and Japan, expectations that air taxis will be widespread in the near future are growing. But is it just hype? For example, aviation laws require aircrafts to have a reserve flight time of at least 30 minutes. That's beyond the reach of current prototypes, which manage around 20 minutes. That's because current battery technology cannot deliver enough power over such a long period. And bigger batteries means more weight to keep airborne. 
Another potential opponent is the weather. Such aircraft cannot fly in windy or very rainy conditions. I think that safety is a big part. Since this is an aircraft, it can only be flown with approval by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism under the Civil Aeronautics Act. In order to obtain this approval, we need to achieve the same level of safety as passenger planes made by companies such as Airbus or Boeing. Then there's the question of how to integrate EVTOL aircrafts into conventional air traffic. One approach is clear, defined paths from A to B with designated landing pads, for example, on skyscrapers. This would, of course, require intense cooperation with regional aviation authorities, not to mention complex tech infrastructure that requires a high level of automation. With remote driving, there's no need for a pilot, so it's very close to automated driving. And eventually, it'll become fully automated, and the aircraft will fly by itself. I'd like to turn that into reality in about five years from the start of the service. The optimism is infectious. Even though I missed out on a test flight, I'm already dreaming of crossing Tokyo Bay in a flying car in the next couple of years. Tomohiro Fukuzawa also told me SkyDrive has a two-seater in the works. Oh, this has been quite a journey. I learned a lot about flying cars and I even got to sit in one. But let's be clear, the ultimate goal for these vehicles is autonomous flying. And until that happens, there are a number of technical obstacles that we have to overcome. And even more importantly, these projects depend heavily on public acceptance. The dream of flying carefree above the traffic is getting closer. But I do wonder, can these concept aircrafts reach the mass market and actually fix urban gridlock? As for the here and now, my way back to Tokyo is still pretty fast on the Shinkansen. Sayonara!